Welcome to the Affordable DC Generators assembly video for the junior model using the GC160 Honda engine and the AC Delco 12SI or 10SI alternator model. What we're going to do is prep the base plate. We want to have it like this so that way the holes are facing up. This is the top of the plate. We want to take our isolation feet using our socket cap screw through the bottom of the foot, flip it over. That's going to come up through the plate like so. Then we're going to use a washer and a an nylock. Using our 3A text key or hex socket, we're going to grab the bottom of the foot, hold it in place, cinch it down with a 7 16 socket. Simple as that. I'm going to repeat that for the rest of them. Note that this foot is going to have a tie down for your quick connect plug, so be sure to put that on the fastener before tightening it down. The base plate has been prepped and the electrical quick connect plug is on this foot. We're going to take our electrical quick connector, place it on top like such, take our quarter inch fastener with a washer, insert it through the bottom up through the plug. You should see the polarities plus and minus on the plug and a little recess for the nut. Quarter inch nylock on the top. Same thing for the second one. Put these in loosely first. Then we're going to take a 7 16 wrench and socket. We're going to use the open end of the wrench to sit down in the recess to hold the nylock. Come up through the bottom, tighten it up. These don't have to be tightened too hard because the connector is plastic. Up next we're going to mount the GC160 onto the base plate. You do have a little bit of wiggle room on these holes between the plate and the engine so you can get it centered up so that way when you drain the oil out of the side it doesn't get all over your base plate. We're going to use the 5 16 fasteners so we want to put a washer on one end with the head and then we're going to use a washer on the nut end using a nylock. So we're going to place the engine onto the base plate, obviously so that the PTO shaft faces towards the electrical connector. Center it up. We're going to take the bolt with the washer, insert it up through the bottom. Washer and nylock tighten these down. Now you can use a socket. I like to use a ratchet wrench because I can slide that underneath and just hold the top. So you want to get these snug before you get the rest of these in and then tighten them down. All right now that we've got the engine mounted to the base plate just one side note that on these fasteners if your casting is a little tall on your engine you can remove the washer on the bottom of the base plate so that way you fully engage the nylock. We're going to mount the alternator adapter to the engine. So before we do this, we want to stick the fasteners through the back side of it, which mount the alternator. So we're going to take the M10 bolt with the lock washer, and that's going to go through the pivot bolt, like so. Then we're going to take the M8 fastener with a lock nut, and that's going to go through the adjusting plate. So now that we've hung the fasteners on the back side of the adapter, this is going to mount to the engine using the supplied fasteners that are 5 16 Now, this is going to match the GC160. If you're using a different engine, we want to double check that these fasteners fit the mounting plate against the engine. So I've prepped my adapter plate, my 5 16 with a washer. We're going to take this, put it against the engine and just start threading these in. Leave them loose so we can get all four in first. On an assembly side note, you do have access to the PTO crankshaft seal from in here for servicing. 
This bore is also large enough to slip over the pulley, so you can leave the pulley attached to the engine and remove the entire adapter plate without having to take that off. We're going to tighten those engine fasteners down using half inch. So now we're ready to mount the alternator assembly. We do have two spacers, so the large spacer of the inside diameter is going to go on that pivot bolt, and then the smaller inner diameter spacer is going to go on the adjusting bolt. Now that might fall off there, but that's the order of assembly, so now we can slide our alternator on there. Now that the adapter is mounted onto the engine and we have our fasteners ready to go with the spacers, we're going to mount our 10 or 12 SI alternator. This is an automotive style. It's a one-wire self-exciting, so that means it has no regulator connection, just a positive and a negative. Now that this is loosely assembled, I'm going to take my 10 millimeter nylock, put it over my pivot bolt. And we're going to leave this loose till we get our belt on. So now that the alternator is mounted to the adapter bracket, we're going to take our supplied pulley. I put my keyway already in there, but you can put your keyway on the engine. I've also trimmed my crankshaft, which is optional. You don't have to, but it's a little bit cleaner. So we're going to put this so that the lock nut is facing towards the engine. And we're going to slide this in place. And we're going to go almost to the end of the PTO towards the engine. I've got my drive belt in here. So now I'm going to slide my belt down over this when I bring my alternator down and I'm going to line up the pulley to make sure that my belt is nice and square to the assembly. Then I can lock my engine pulley down. I've got my drive pulley on. I've got my drive belt on. I'm going to slide the belt over the pulley with the alternator in the down position. I'm going to bring it up and check to make sure that the belt looks square against the pulley. If I'm happy with where my engine pulley is, I'm going to take my 4 millimeter Allen or hex socket. I'm going to tighten it down against the keyway. Once this is tight, I'm going to set my belt tension. I'm going to bring the alternator all the way up so that my belt is nice and tight. And then I'm going to lock my pivot, excuse me, my adjustment ball down using a 13 millimeter wrench. Now that my adjustment is good, I'm also going to tighten my pivot fastener with a 17 millimeter wrench and socket. I'm going to slide the wrench down the back side and tighten my nylock knot. So our belt is set, alternator is mounted, we're ready to make our electrical connections. Using the supply ground bolt, we're going to attach the ground wire to the ground position of the alternator. Using a 13 millimeter wrench or socket, tighten that one up. I'm going to remove the positive charge wire off the alternator. And attach my cable like so. Be aware that as you tighten this, your positive cable may want to rotate slightly, so just hold on to it. Alternator installation is complete once you mount the protective boots over your charge wires. Last step is to mount the handle. We're going to use our 916 socket. The fastener has a lock washer on it. Handle goes over top of the engine valve cover. Congratulations, you've completely assembled your affordable DC generator. Be sure to connect your load to the quick connect before starting up the engine. We do not want to run the alternator 
while it's not connected to anything, nor do we want to remove the load from the electrical system while this is running. So be sure to shut the engine down before making or breaking any electrical connections. You're all ready to charge some batteries.